There was a time when if you wanted to go fast for less money, then you turned your attention to the Blue Oval. Because there's no doubt about it, Ford were the king of the performance car for the blue collar worker. The Lotus Cortina, the Escort Mexico, the XR3, the XR2, the Sierra RS Cosworth, the Escort RS Cosworth, and of course the Focus and Fiesta STs. But things have changed now, because at the moment you can't buy a new Fiesta, let alone an ST one, and soon the Focus is about to go to production as well. And as we move toward this electrified world, what hope is there for those, so like I said, just blue collar workers, if they want a fast Ford? Well, thankfully, they do still have one nameplate in their arsenal, and it's quite a famous one, Mustang. The problem is, however, for the Mustang, that going fast for less money is got pretty much forgotten about by Ford because, and there's a massive spoiler coming here, a spoiler so big it would eclipse the Sierra RS500 Cosworth's one. This is 75,000 pounds for this car, which puts it into the firing line of these two. So to put up against the Mustang, I brought along the, this much more luxurious option of the Genesis GV60. And I brought along the Kia EV6 GT, which is bonkers fast if you press the right buttons. So, without further ado, welcome to this week's triple test. Welcome to these three expensive cars. And welcome to Auto EV. <laughs> Now, before we get started on this week's triple test, it is, of course, that time where we would ask you to make sure that you are subscribed to the Auto EV channel. Then, once you've done that, make sure you press the little bell button down below, because that's the way you'll get a notification of when our next video is uploaded and it's gone live. Once you've watched it, if you have enjoyed it, then make sure you give it a thumbs up. And don't forget, leave us your thoughts and comments down below. Let me know what you think of these three cars we've got together, such as the, the Mustang, the Genesis, and, of course, the Kia EV6 GT, and, of course, on the Auto EV channel as a whole. So I've roped these two in with me today because I say the Mustang Mach E's, I say Ford's performance cars have always been the sort of the, 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 the choice of sort of like the blue collar worker, as I say. It's that, that going fast for less. They've always been good value for money performance cars. But as I say, this is a £75,000 car now, the Mustang Mach E GT. And we have tested all three of these cars separately. But what are they going to be like when we test them together? Which of these three are we going to put as the new, dare I suggest, people's performance champion? Time to find out. Right, let's kick off with styling. And I have to say, I quite like all three cars, you know, individually in their own bits. Yeah. But I do really like the look of this Mustang. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I mean, I, I was dubious. When they, when they said they were going to take the old Mustang and make it into an SUV, I thought, oh my God, that's not going to work. But actually, I think they pulled it off and it, it really does work. Do you think it's less of a problem for us here in the UK as it might be for, obviously, people in the States? Possibly. You know, because we're not really used to Mustang, you know, being we that like kind of a legend. Brand, don't we? Or, yeah. Oh, it's a Mustang. Yeah. Kind of. And maybe that's it. That's exactly how Ford are seeing it. Because you notice there's no Ford badges on it. Well, there's one there's on the top one, of the windscreen. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there's one there. But otherwise, it's, it's Mustang badges. Yeah. So maybe you're right. It's like a sub-brand now, almost, yeah. of Ford. But I think there's enough styling kind of cues from Mustangs. Definitely. You know, the kind of, you know, the, the real kind of shark-like kind of headlights. You get the you know, the kind of front grille that you would get in a Mustang. You don't get the kind of Mexican moustache, as I call it, with the GT. <laughs> yeah. It's that kind of black filled in. I don't know if it's... Is that because it's, it's the GT version? It's because it's the right. GT version. Yeah, yeah. So you get the Mustang, the pony badge there, and then this black kind of, or graphite kind of finish there. Yeah, whereas yeah. that's body colour on the lesser models. Yeah, yeah. And this front spoiler is a bit more kind of jutting. It's quite aggressive, isn't it? It yeah. is, yeah. And you get the kind of, the, the body coloured wheel arches, whereas they're not black, they're black on the standard Mustang mach yeah. and then you get these lovely 20 inch the wheels are good aren't they? Yeah, wheels. I really like brakes those. as well which, yeah. is, which yeah. really pop out of uh, yeah, the, they do. the wheels they're quite nice it makes it look very sporty I think the brand I think, think so yeah. Yeah. have you seen what they've done this kind of trick here with the body colour yes. as it comes back there but actually the roof line's black and it's higher it makes it look sleeker doesn't it, it? makes it look a lot sleeker so I yeah. think that's quite clever they do a good job yeah. the think, only you know, thing Charlie was, Charlie sorry, was saying earlier about Ford having the heritage and knowing how to design a car or Mustang as well especially yeah the knowledge isn't it yeah yeah, yeah, over yeah, the others, yeah, yeah. yeah for sure. There's, a, I mean, there's traces of that in there, isn't there? The is DNA is definitely kind of in the car. Yeah. I think you've said three things there I think I completely agree with. First of all, as you say, it's almost like a sub-brand. The heritage and the DNA of Mustang is evident in here. Yeah. I yeah. think it'd be interesting because, you know, Ford are talking about bringing the Capri badge back, but it being on a small 
electric crossover. Right. So maybe we're going to feel that way, the way that the US feels about this car. Yes. So who yeah. knows? So maybe we might not feel so quite good about a Capri being an SUV, but I think they've done a really good job with the Mustang, they Mach-E have. GT. Yeah. The only thing, the only thing I'd say that I'm not 100% convinced about is these door handles, <laughs> the button door true. handles. It's got a little button above and you press that and then pull. It's yeah. almost like an Ikea fitting, isn't it? It is, that's exactly <laughs> it, yeah. I'm yeah. just not sure of that, but I think overall, this is a good looking car. It is, yeah, yeah. Now, of course, the newest brand of the three is this, Genesis, which yeah. is obviously part, like Kia, it's part of the Hyundai group. Yes. But this is the kind of luxury arm, if you like. I suppose this is to Hyundai what Lexus is Toyota. That's what they've kind of kind of got. But you made a really interesting point in the introduction here. It's a slightly kind of more luxurious kind of it, it is, isn't it? And take uh, on it. I get not only led by the badge, but I get slight Aston Martin cues yeah. from various little bits there, and it's kind of borrowed heritage. Whereas the Mustang had kind of its own heritage from the Ford. This is kind of borrowed little bits. It's a bit of an eclectic mix of stuff yeah. to get that luxurious whatever you term as luxurious feel is. Do you think you think it's a new kind of take on luxury? I mean, I think you mentioned this, Charlie, that you're not so keen on the idea of, yeah, you don't think no, it's very no, luxurious they looking. They definitely haven't gone for the sportier look, I think. No. The other two have. And as you say, it's, it's more of a premium look. Uh, and the, the styling, yeah, it's just, with the front of it, I'm, you know, it's different, isn't it? But is it just different for different sake? You know, just splitting mm. the headlamps like that with the, the split. It I, seemed, quite, I quite like the headlamps, the way they've done all those individual... The they're individual nice. lamps, They yes. do work, work exceptionally well, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 So that, that, that's a plus. Yeah, they are good, aren't um, they? I, I'm guessing, in my book, I don't know about you two, but um, it's your definition of what luxury is. This is someone's view of luxury. Yeah. Whether this it's everyone's, I don't know. And I think it's changing as well. I mean, if you think back to the old days where you're just slapping on a bit of leather and a bit of wood on the inside <laughs> was luxurious, you know, yeah. whereas now people are looking for sustainability and different type of materials that feel differently. Right, yeah. I think, you know, we keep mentioning it, the brand that we all really do love here, and one car I've seen that's going to compete with these when it comes out, the Polestar 4, yes. on the inside, with the woven materials and stuff, that's very luxurious. Mm -hmm. You know, that feels Yeah, luxurious. tactile and it's very, very tactile. Nice and, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, like, I like the colour of this, this kind of midnight blue. I do, metallic, I do. Nice. I think it works better in dark colours, the yeah. bright kind of lime that they launched with, and the whites and the yeah. silvers. I Just don't think it works so well. Yeah, and I don't think, and that's right. It's it's almost that it's not sure what it wants to be. As Charlie, it's just not really sure yeah. what it wants to be. Whereas in the darker colour, I do think it suits it better. The only thing I'm not 100. I don't particularly like the chrome. No. I think chrome's a bit passe now, and well, it's that's the only one. To get this premium look, isn't it? But I don't think they need it. And it's the only one of the three that has mm. the chrome. Um, should point out this car's got the outdoor pack, so you get the roof yeah. rails. Okay. Um, which and they also get no wear. Rear wipers for any three? No, that yeah. one does. Oh, that one does. Oh, that one it? does. Okay. Yeah, the Mustang's got a rear wiper. Yeah. Okay. So um, wheels on this one. I do quite like the I wheels like on this. Yeah. 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 That kind of, kind of, almost kind of, they look almost like the kind of the blade that you take out of a Swiss Army knife to take yeah. things at horses' hoofs. I like them. That's that's, that's quite <laughs> cool. They're twenty ones, aren't they? I think. These are twenty ones. Yeah, and the Michelin. And bigger and, than the Mustang. Yeah, and the other thing as well, they're Michelin Pilot Sports. So it's a performance brand tire as well. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. all wheel drive, which is the one thing we should right. say, yeah, all three is, yeah. cars yeah. are all wheel drive as well. So interesting. But yeah, as I say, it's not as sporty looking as you would say the other two maybe are. No. And we're not 100% sure whether they've quite got the kind of luxury. I think part of the design brief on this was to make it appealing to a wider range, whereas the Mustang and possibly this is a bit more defined age. I think, you know, this is a bit more possibly to the older section as well. I don't know. Might but then be. why make it sporty? Well, because everyone likes a bit of a... <laughs> Even you, Brian. <laughs> this is true. This is true. But yeah, but we're, we're not 100%. I'm not 100% sure on this one. But it's different. I agree with you. Yeah, yeah. It's different. But yeah, it's different. But let's leave it at that. <laughs> now, oddly enough, this is the car we're really, really divided over, I think. Yeah. Because I absolutely love the ev 6s styling. I think this thing just is, I think it's one of the best looking cars out there. But you two aren't all that convinced, are not, you? No, not convinced. Um, from two angles, it, it's, it's kind of good. Mm. There's a couple of angles, like straight on from the rear or straight from the front, that in my mind, they, it just looks a bit wrong. I, you yeah, know, I'm not, mm, not feeling it. Charlie? I, I love the front of this car. I think the front of it is, is the best looking out of these three by far and it looks really sleek and it's really sleek up until the back yeah and then it just becomes a bit bulbous mm. um, 
I, so the spoiler, I mean, you know, that's the key little trademark now, isn't it? So yeah. I mean, it's kind of... I, I, and I get what you're saying. I do get it. And, and you know, and, and, you know beauty's an eye of the beholder, as we've always kind of said here. I love this kind of visor graphic, this wraparound glass house. Yeah. You know, the, the, the blacked out pillars. So, so it makes it... It makes yeah. it look really low and sleek and sporty. I love the fact that the roof looks floating, because you've all said that extends that rear pillar mm. where you've got the black through it. Charlie, I'm absolutely with you. I think the front is the best looking of the three. It's really kind of sharp and kind of yeah. pointy. There's yeah. bits that I like, as I say, the, the way the, the kind of the, the, the wheel art, the light here just kind of flows into that wheel arch, that line there, the kick up line along the side that goes yeah. into the back wheel arch. So there's nothing really on this that sets it apart from the other in the range, is it? Apart from the wheels. Apart from the well, wheels. They, they have changed the front a little bit, but genuinely, you'd have to have the two of them sat side by side to notice. Yeah. The, the, this front lower, um, the cooling area is different and this bit of the grill well it's, it's a grill it's not even a grill this plastic strip between the headlights is slightly different on the gt but as i say you'd need the two of them sat side by side to see it yeah. and the front spoilers this this air dam here juts slightly differently yeah. but yeah i mean as i say you i mean the wheel the wheels do make a big difference to the look of it but just even with the the big calipers mm. in the lime green yeah, why didn't they put a GT logo on it? Yeah, like that's, a, that's a fair you, you, point. You yeah. always get a logo and that kind of helps that yeah. sporty look. I just think for this price range or this price point, those little details are the ones that count and you know, yeah. you just need to do those things. Yeah. And, and the back, I mean, from my point of view, straight on at the back is, is not a, a great look, but um, it's, it seems very slabby and very, you know. It is probably its worst angle in my book as well, yeah, I would okay. suggest. But I do like it. I like the way mm. the light flows across the yeah. top. So that kind of, it's almost like the Aston Martin DBX. It's got some nice touches well, in the back. Yeah, I think it's. I think if you if if we were to say like imitations and set is form of flattery, it's quite jaggy eye pace and it's sort of like you know it's that yeah. kind of crossover but kind of lower and a bit sleeker and yeah. you know it's it's. I'm yeah, not saying it's sure. identical. It's just it reminds me of that kind of genre of car. Sure. Yeah. You know, but so if we're going to give a one, two, three for styling on for styling, okay. Charlie, where are you? Uh, I do, the, the Genesis would be at the bottom for me. You, that's like, in third place for you. Yeah. Second place goes to? Second place, as much as I love the EV6, the GT, uh, it's going to say, because I, I do like what they've done with the Mustang. I the Mustang. taking that heritage of the Mustang. As I say, initially I didn't think they could pull that off. Yeah. But I think it has, and it looks like a, a mean, and it's got that sportiness. I, yeah, yeah, that's first place okay. in styling. Rod, so, for so for me, um, the Kia, I mean, you know, there are, as I say, there's, there's a couple of angles that I really like. And I saw one uh, yesterday in black and it does make it look quite different yeah, in some ways. Colours, it, it, it yeah, colours. We said that about the Genesis, didn't we? True. And the colour, it's very, very True. particular. Yeah. So, so my one, two, three is Mustang one. I really kind of like what they're doing, doing with that. Uh, mm. The Genesis in second and then Kia third. Oh, interesting. Right. Yeah. yeah OK. For me... <sighs> completely different to, to both of you. Yeah. I, I'd sort of agree with Charlie. I think Mustang is, what they've done with that marquee, I think is brilliant. I think they've got the heritage and the DNA just right. I think they've done enough with it. And maybe moving to the GT, like we were saying earlier, making it look just that little subtle different to make you look twice, yeah. with, you know, with the blacked out grill, the bigger wheels, the caliper, the Brembo brakes, that type of thing. But I'd put it in second place behind the Kia. Okay. I would do. I think the Kia, is, for me, is the, is the okay. sharpest looking of the two. Call. But it's a close call, yeah. So your one, two, three is Mustang, Kia? No, my one, two, three is Kia, Mustang, Genesis. Right. And I'm sort of agreeing with you on the Genesis. There are areas of it I really like, but as a, uh, there are areas that I don't like. And as a whole, it's not quite gelling as much for me. So, right. so that's my three. So I'm going Kia first, Mustang second, very close second, and then Genesis third. So there we go. Now, as all three cars are crossovers they've got to have an element of practicality about them and in fairness they do the mustang has 402 liters of boot space with a 60 40 split rear seat with those folded down the total capacity goes up to 1420 um there isn't really any underfloor storage however there is just a, a tiny little kind of trough in there that's um that would take just sort of like a first aid kit and stuff like that but in fairness the boot is actually quite large and the mustang also has quite a large front storage area as we'll see in a minute but yes the sort of like the four suitcases do fit across the back of the mustang very easily with plenty of room for extra jackets or rucksacks and such like. The only thing I must say I'm not so keen on is this flimsy kind of cloth parcel shelf, which I do find a little bit, I don't know, cheap, dare I suggest, on a £75,000 car. Now, the GV60 
actually has a bigger boot than the Mustang at 430 litres, which will extend up to 1,550 if you knock down the split folding 60-40 rear seat. However, as much as I say the boot is bigger, it's less practical in some respects because of where they've mounted the, the load cover because we can't get the big suitcases in that way because of where it is, it intrudes. So they have to go in that way unless we take the load cover out, which means they have to sit side by side, which then means our two carry-ons, whilst they fit, we can't get the load cover over them. So that, in terms of security, isn't the best answer. So although the boot is actually bigger than the Mustangs, it's not quite as practical a space. However, it does have a little bit more under floor storage than the Mustang. So for carrying cables in the rear, there's no problem at all because underneath this boot floor, you've got all your cables neatly packaged in bags. Plus as well, you've got the vehicle to load adapter as well, which comes um, with the vehicle, although it is an option in fairness. And there is some front storage um, underneath the bonnet. However, it is much smaller than the Mustangs. Now the EV6 has a boot space of 470 litres. Standard 60-40 split rear seat, which takes the total capacity up to 1,270 litres. However, where it does differ from the other two is you do have a small hatch for a load through. So if you want to carry two rear passengers, you've got, I don't know, a cotton pole that you've bought from B&Q or whatever, you can actually get it through their offers, some skis or so forth. The boot itself is quite a good shape and it will actually fit all four suitcases in, albeit with a little bit of, as we would say, jiggery pokery, um, to actually get them in here. But they will fit with the rear cover in place, he says. Ta da! So there we go. And like the Genesis, you do have some under bonnet storage as well, although again, it's way down in the Mustangs. Like the Genesis, it's only 20 litres because these are all wheel drive cars. So I'm in the Mustang and I've got my two teenage sons in the back. <laughs> what do we think, lads? Oh, there's enough space in here. It's, um, it's, it's quite quite comfortable. Yeah. I really like the panoramic roof. That's yeah. an optional extra, isn't it? Yeah. Is oh, it, or is no, it I think it's standard on the back oh, no, really like yeah. yeah, It feels, it, really nice. it feels um, a good sense of space. Yeah. Now, the seats themselves, what are they like in terms of comfort? Would you go a distance in them, do you think? Yeah, I think I would. Yeah. yeah. They, look, they look quite flat when you walk, <laughs> when you're looking look at flat, them. Yeah, yeah, but they're, they're actually like, comfier than they, than they look, look to see on them. They've got Alcantara in the centres, haven't they? Yeah. 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 It feels, feels nice. How does the floor feel? Because you've got a flat floor there. Does it feel pushed up at all? Not I, a little bit, but my feet can get under the front seats. Yeah. Quite yeah. Easily. This is my driving position, Rod. So that's exactly how I would have my seat. So are yeah, you all right for that? Um, I feel there's enough space for my knees. Toes are a bit kind of um, yeah stuck right under your seat, but not, yeah. not nothing nothing to complain about. Too okay. Much. Yeah. Storage. Sto yeah, got a big kind of bins. That, actually, they are very big. The door bins. Yeah. But no uh, back seat storage. There's some USB ports. You've got an armrest there with yeah. some for cup holders. True. So your water bottles will be fine. So yeah, yeah. armrest. Cost of coffee. Really standard, isn't it? Yeah. This this marks really badly, doesn't it? This finish, this matte black finish. Yeah. Yeah, so it's not an old car, and this no. this seat in particular has got quite a few marks on it. Yeah, I have to say, in terms of materials and stuff, I mean, whilst the build quality is there, that it doesn't feel like it, w it should do for this level of car in terms not of the materials that, that used. Price, no. As you say, the seat material in the middle, quite like, yeah. but it doesn't feel premium, does it, it at it all? It doesn't feel premium, no. Quite a nice mm -hmm. little touch. There's um, little passenger lights at the back, so if yeah. you're reading or something, that's quite good. Okay, and yeah. connectivity? Yeah, so USB to, you know, USB-C and normal. Yeah, yeah. And two vents. Okay, those, yeah, nice. so on the whole, good. Yeah, happy. All right, happy. okay, let's try one of those. So in the Genesis now, um, and how are you two feeling it in the back? Um, how, how's the room? I mean, my, my feet are a lot kind of closer to the bottom of the seat. They're yeah, really that's, pinch, it's pinching. tight. It's, it's tight much. to get your feet underneath here. And I have to say as well, I feel like my, I feel like my bum's way down and my knees are way up. So yeah. it's kind of pushing your so knees it's, up. So it's going to push my knees up. That seat's quite far back. What you can do, obviously, in the Genesis is you can control... That's, the that's the passenger answer. seat. Yeah. Yeah. So if no one was sitting there and you were feeling a bit tight, you could. Great if you're an Uber driver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is my driving position, Charlie. How, how's your fit? Yeah. Room? No, I've got plenty of knee room. That's not a problem at all. It's yeah. Just, it's just just the toes. It's, the, it's the, yeah. I'd say the same exactly. It's it's knee room's fine. It's the toes. And as I say, I just for some reason I just feel as I say that my, my feet have been pushed up a little mm, bit. Okay. So, Head, so headroom the, I'm okay with. But yeah, it is scalloped a, out here at the is, back. There's a recess, yeah, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, there is a recess. And the seat itself feels 
comfortable. So one of the selling points about this car is it's a plant-based um, material. Okay. Yeah. So how, plant-based leather kind of esque. Yeah. You, you wouldn't know. No, no, it's, it is a nice kind of finish that it's got in the inside, in fairness, on the material. Yeah. You know, it's got a nice kind of soft touch to it, you know, yeah. in that it's sense. It's well-specced, isn't it? It's really well-specced You've got heated car. rear seats as well. Yeah, heated rear seats. You've got a little cup holder there. As yeah, well. storage is good, yeah, you get the door bins and you get the cup holder there. And we've got oh, an armrest with more cup holders there. So, so if you want yeah. Costa and an espresso, you know, <laughs> yeah. the latte and espresso. That, that yeah. door bin is way smaller than the uh, Mustangs. The Mustangs, yeah, it is, yeah. Is there any oh, seat storage at the back? Yeah, you've got the kind yeah. of, you know, the airline style rigid. Easy okay. jet specials. Easy jet specials, yeah. Um, and plus as well, behind the, the centre console, there's a good sized good storage size. bin there. Yeah, okay. So, you, you know, you've got yeah. kids, you can just chuck loads of stuff in there. And connectivity? Two USB-C ports. Mm. So no USB then? No, just USB-C, so you oh, just okay. got, that's it, yeah. Right. You just got and to, you've both got reading lights as well in the back of it. Uh, yep, yeah. yep, little reading lights up there, yeah. um, and coat hooks, obviously. So, yeah, I mean, it's, oh, and face vents on the um, yeah. on the door pillars, okay. so that's quite good. And again, this is an option, the panoramic roof, but it does really help, doesn't it? It does, yeah. I mean, obviously, with the light headlining as well helps, too, because it gives yeah. you more of a feeling of space. Um, and we obviously, we're not particularly tall in the back, but you know, it, it, it still, there's a reasonable, feel. I'd probably say it still feels a little bit more enclosed than the Mustang, do you Yeah, think? this this panoramic isn't as anywhere near. Because it doesn't come Mustang. all the way back, no, no. you know, so it, it finishes in front of us, if that makes sense. Yeah. Though it lets a lot of light in, but it's yeah, very it good. But uh, but on the whole, it's good. Mm. I'd probably say the Mustang's a little bit better, would you, Charlie? I, I personally would, although you've got a few more sort of gadgets and things, I still prefer the Mustang. Yeah, the Mustang. yeah so there's more space yeah. in the Mustang. Mm. Mm. Staying more comfortable. More yeah. comfortable, but more toys in the back of the Genesis. Good. Okay, so here we are in the Kia EV6 GT, checking out the interior. What do you guys think? Oh, I've got absolutely tons of leg space back it's here. It's cavernous, isn't it? It really <laughs> is. <laughs> I mean, yeah, your, your feet can go where they want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, re there's not, I can't imagine there being a problem for anyone back here. No. no. I mean, even, I mean, uh, I'm sure you I'd told me. Sit on your lap. You probably <laughs> actually, yeah, you probably could. In fairness, I'd say again, if you were to put your legs straight on, there's a tight. I mean, I'm wearing kind of slightly bigger boots today, but yeah, it's a little bit pinchy on the toes underneath, but not like the Genesis was. No, um, no. Completely flat floor across. I don't feel like my legs are pushed up. Um, as you much. Can get them under the, under the front seats, okay? Just, just yeah, yeah, just, yeah, 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 I'd say that. Um, so, yeah, in terms of, and, it, and headroom is the same. The, it's, the, yeah. The big difference though, this hasn't got a panoramic roof, so no. it does feel yeah. a bit more closed in, doesn't it, as a yeah. passenger? Yeah, isn't it, really? Yeah, because, yeah, and obviously it's got a dark headlining, and, and obviously thing, black leather. They're quite high windows, aren't they? Very and shallow so, window so you line. you don't get as much um, so you maybe, feeling of space. Yeah, you don't get the feeling of space, but God, there is plenty of it. There yeah, really there is. is. There's no, there's no way you couldn't be comfortable. But I'd quite happily do a long trip, behind, you know, behind you, Charlie. And uh, yeah. this fluorescent piping. How, how do we feel about that? <sighs> It's not my cup of tea, but I, I mean, I suppose that in the 80s it was red. You yeah, know, they're yeah, all they're just trying different thing. kind of things, isn't it? I'm kind of glad they didn't go blue, like a lot of EV manufacturers yeah, tend true, to do. Yeah, they're nice. moving away from that now. Aren't yeah, they? so but the seats are comfortable, aren't they? I mean, seats are comfortable. It's kind of got the. Uh, you got the Alcantara, Alcantara yeah. I mean, yeah, on the front seats, that yep. really stops you moving around. It does, yeah, it holds you in place. Yeah, yeah. Head restraints are just kind of nice. Um, and again, we've got. Um, Ooh. Yeah, this is a bit different because you can have it just as an open tray or you can slide down and you've got cup holders. Okay, that's quite good. So, yes, yeah, so that's pretty good. Uh, two USB-C ports in the back as well. There isn't the storage that there is in the Genesis and there the Mustang. Isn't. The door bins will take a water bottle, but that's it. And there's no, there. there's no yeah. um, pockets in the backs of the, the seats because of these kind of bucket-style seats. Yeah. So there's lacking in storage. Um, but in terms of space for passengers... I'd say this is an absolute win. good. And we've also got a passenger light each, although then they're, they're kind of just on or off. For both yeah, they're on or off, yeah. You can't move them, can you? You can't, no, you, they're not individual. Um, plus, as well, as I said, remember, you've got that load through as well. So if you're carrying yeah, yeah. a kind of a long pole, if you're going fishing or something like that, you can put it through there. useful, isn't it? But I, I, in terms of space, I, I think the Kia wins hands down. What's good as well is you can actually poke Charlie through the hole. <laughs> If he's driving too he's slowly phone, or fast. Yeah, yeah, he's just giving him a poke yeah. in the back. Speed up, speed up, Dad. You wouldn't like that with your kids. <laughs> Oi, Dad! <laughs> Perfect. No, it's it's a, a really big, nice interior. In yeah, yeah, I think it's a winner here for the Kia. Definitely.
Right, we're in the interior. I'm in the interior of the Mustang Mach E GT with Charlie now. This is the car I've been driving this yeah. week. Um, yeah. Right, a bit of a mixed bag for me, Charlie, okay, uh, here. Okay. Um, I mean, the main talking point is this massive, big yeah. uh, tablet-style screen, very kind of Tesla-like, but it's obviously in portrait mode. Um, good and bad. Uh, first of all, it runs Ford Sync 4 software, which I think is excellent. So connectivity, when you get in, it's, a, it's wireless Apple CarPlay, yeah. Android Auto. It's really f fast. It reacts to things really quickly. Um, it's sort of split, if you like. So you've permanently got the climate control always on at the bottom I of the screen. Like that, I think, yeah. yeah, so you know you immediately need to change temperature, turn on your heated seat. It's always on. So although it's on the screen, it is there. Yeah. They've also got this volume control embedded school, into the glass like yeah high something, yeah, yeah. And it, you know and it's, it's nice and easy obviously you've got the control on the steering wheel as well yeah um and as i say the screen itself is quite easy just to kind of flick through it's maybe just the aesthetics of it i'm totally. not 100 yeah. percent with no, it's, uh, gets, in, gets in the way for me you gonna just almost want to knock it off the dash yeah you've got because you've got that kind of it's almost like a cowled dashboard like an old mustang Yes. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And then this then hides it. You know, it's, it's just there. Car, isn't it? The new Explorer that's coming out, so it's a smaller car to this, has the screen, similar screen, but you can slide it. So you can have it more nice slanted yeah. there, or you can have it more upright if you want it. So I don't know whether that's maybe something they should maybe do with the facelift, if they do a facelift on the Mac. something like that, because yeah. it does feel just plot. And, and everything else is just so nice. I, I love all these kind of materials. And yeah. The Bang & Awesome, just having a little logo. Yeah. That looks really premium I yeah think. and it's a good stereo system that's in the car uh you've got that kind of alcantara like you said yeah, in the back yeah, you know in the seats. Nice. What, what i should say however if you want a more in-depth review of the mustang uh, mach e or the mach e gt we have done those so we'll put links to them up above we're just going to do a quick synopsis of what we like and what we don't like about this oh it's got things like amazon alexa in here as well yeah, i might yeah, say that yeah. yeah so voice activation is okay so yeah that's a mixed bag for me it's 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 um it's quite easy to use it's very quick to react to things it's got apple CarPlay and Android Auto as you'd want, but it's just the aesthetics of it I'm not sure about in that yeah, sense. So no, that's totally. the, one, I mean, the one. Overall, I, I do like the cabin layout, mm. and I love this kind of air vent that runs the whole yeah, length, which yeah, is really nice, yeah. and the small... I, I'm not a big fan generally of like the smaller screens like that, but that one actually does work, I think. And what they've done with it is, because it's quite wide, they've not tried to put too much information in, in yeah. a very small space. Yeah, so you've yeah. got, a, and it's all placed nicely, so you've got your range over that side, yeah. you've got your cruise control there, and then your mileage over there. So I quite like that display mm -hmm. is quite good. Steering wheel's a nice kind of thickness, it feels nice to hand, no, controls work well. It felt quite thin, uh, Yeah, I suppose well, maybe, to yeah, to the other two, it certainly does feel thinner than the other two. Um, but it is pleasingly round. Yeah. Storage is good. Yeah. Coffee cup and water bottle go neatly in there. You've got a wireless charging pad there. Plus you've got under storage yeah, there. Storage Plus it. you've also got this armrest that flips up. And you've got a big deep bin in there. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you've got glove box and front door bins that are in two stages as well. So front storage is excellent. Plus a sunglasses holder up there. Ah. The only thing I'm going to say is this. The only thing I'm going to say is this. And I do agree with you in terms of the materials and stuff like that. All of this is the same as the standard Mustang Mach-E, really. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is a lot cheaper than this car. <laughs> this just doesn't feel as they premium as you'd expect. They enough. haven't done enough no. to elevate the price. The seats are comfortable because you get these wraparound bits on the shoulders. Yeah. So there yeah, is more kind like of sporty that. style of seat. But it's like, you know, when you used to get the old kind of Recaro seats and the XR3s and RS Turbos with the Recaro in it. Yeah. They haven't done anything kind of special like that. It just doesn't feel lifted from the standard no. marquee, and that's my issue with it. So that's the two things that I would say irk me with the interior. Mm. That's not the best from it comes to aesthetics, as, as, as well as it works. It does work very, very well. It just looks a bit incongruous there, yes. and it doesn't feel as special an interior as you would want maybe for the price of this car. Yeah. The functionality of it, well, it all works okay. You know, everything's easy to hand. You know, it's all easy to, to, yeah. to reach. Yeah. There's bags of storage. But yeah, it just doesn't feel special enough for me. I, I agree. Okay, so this is just a quick overview of the Genesis. Uh, you can see the, the full video if you uh, look in our uh, Auto EV library. Um, it's quite a nice, luxurious place, do you think? Brian? Yeah, I do. Uh, there's a couple of bits that I'm not 100% keen on, and we'll yeah. get to that in a second. But personally for me, 
it, the, the you know the seat we said it in the back the seat material the kind of you know things like that there's a lot of stuff to like about it there's yeah. some nice touch points but then there's also some not nice touch okay, points let's, so give it a let's start. turn it on so the first thing to mention is the crystal ball the crystal which is ball here. so as soon as you start it your seat moves to the pre defined position and the crystal ball turns over. See, that's nice. Yeah. And that's a bit, people say, oh, it's a bit gimmicky. Actually, I quite like that. It makes it feel a bit special. Yeah. And the other bit that I quite like is the kind of, data suggest, for want of a better word, eye drive controller. Yeah. You know, the kind of rotatable. T of talking thing. of controls, I mean, we are, we are faced with a massive amount of uh, different switches, buttons, um, yeah. knobs and turns. So this, it's quite, quite full on, isn't it? And there's a swipe here on the... Yeah on the steering wheel itself. This car also comes with fingerprint recognition as it well, as you were saying the yes, other day. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, which, and facial recognition, so you don't, you oh, can leave okay. the key in the car. Um, in one of the comments before, there was a, a, a swimmer who goes out in the mornings, leaves a key in the car with a phone, yeah. and then just uses the facial uses recognition. Facial. Yeah. So oh, right, okay, okay. for some people that may work. That might work. Yeah, but yeah. Um, yeah. So right, so I've always found the Genesis is the same as the kind of Hyundai and obviously the Kia. Mm. The one thing I'm never very keen on is I, when it's in my position, I find the wheel cuts the speed bit there. It does, doesn't it? It's just that corner. You, you yeah. can't see that bit. That's it, you know. I quite like the wraparound Two uh, screens. console. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. You know, into one. Yeah. Um, that all works well. Uh, the stereo, really like out of all three cars. Um, this is the upgraded version. But, and again, um, Bang & Olufsen, like the Mustang, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a really good one in here as well, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, no, it does sound really good, so uh, that's that's definitely a plus. For me, I'll tell you the things that I don't like about the mm. Genesis. There's there's two things that really stand out for me. Yeah. Um, the first of all is the silvery plastic. Yeah, I agree. You know, on the whilst I like the fact that it has a lot of physical buttons, mm. They, when you touch them, they just feel like cheap plastic. The one that really gets me is the door handle. It just seems a bit excessive, doesn't it? It's I, it feels kind of, cheap. Yeah. The other, then, yeah, go on. I was going to say, and uh, yeah, this knurling on everything as well. Yeah. It's a bit, it's a bit kind of uh, 1970s uh, cut glass crystal-y yeah. kind of effect. It's not a nice one, I don't think. Yeah, and, and, and it's just the area, look, this blue plastic down here just yeah. reminds me of an old Datsun Cherry. Does it? Do you oh, know that's what I mean? funny because. Um, I, Austin 1100 had the same colour, petrolly blue yeah, kind of. Um, it, just, it was a bit 19. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really. The other thing yeah. I'm not very keen on it. I, whilst I like the fact it has physical controls in the wheel, mm. I actually don't like. I think these spokes are too thick. I've always found yeah. them too thick. Yeah, when you're driving, you know that's a natural position, and it you you. Yeah, feels very so very. So you have thick. to kind of go there or yeah. there. But, um, Storage yeah. is good though. You get this drawer that pops out, so you know you can yeah. it's in there, and you've got phone charging phone and charging. Uh, yeah, no, no, two nice big, big cup bin. holders. Yeah. yeah, you don't have the under console storage that you get in the uh, Mustang, but there's a bin at the front there, and door bins are pretty good. Yeah. So yeah, I, I mean. I know physical climate controls in terms of they're on a screen, but they're always there, aren't they? That's true, yeah. that's true. That is a, a good. But you, as I said, you are overfaced slightly with um, mm. quite a lot of uh, buttons and so knobs what, and dials. In terms of, you I mean, you've been using this car. You're yeah. the one that's had the Genesis this week. What do you like and don't like about the interior for you? As a, The button overload, I think it could be paired back and be even more stylish, to be honest. Yeah. I don't like the knurling, but... Um, driving position, I like, you know, getting in the car, um, the seat moves forward. It feels There's like lot, it's yours, yeah. yeah. And it does, it is a comfortable car to drive. Yeah. Um, you know, this perceived luxury thing, I'm, I'm kind of uh, not, I'm feeling, no, it's not too, it's too much, but... Um, a bit van den Pla. Yeah, it's kind of a bit overdone. Uh, sometimes simpler is better. Yeah. And, and classier as well. Yeah, so. I, as I say, for me, it's just, as I say, there's too many silvery plastic bits. Yeah. Um, just to feel special. But saying um, that, it's a comfortable position to drive. Also, um, it's got full massage on the seats. Have you tried that? <laughs> yeah. So, so you can adjust it just for your pelvis or for your whatever. But, I mean, uh, that's quite good then, I yeah. suppose, from that point. If, if, you know, that's your All thing. right, okay. So good, yeah. it could be better. Yeah. All right. Okay, so here we are in the Kia EV6 GT. Uh, yeah, you've been using this this week. What do you think? I, I really like it. I, I love this dash layer. It's just... Mm one screen right the way along and when nothing's on there's no, there's no buttons or anything no no that's it and i just love being able to see everything you need in here it's all up in your eye lane isn't it yeah right across reminds yeah, you of the kind of old dashboard of the bmws and you, just, you know and the, the kind of sabs used to kind of sweep around the driver rather yeah. than you know, like being flat yes yeah, um, yeah. very similar kind of obviously 
it's from the same group obviously as Genesis so I think software and some of the graphics are very very similar but it's really good to use isn't it really easy yeah, to use yeah the graphics are really good um, um, yeah I love the way this kind of love that yeah. yeah so you've got the two things here so you've got shortcut buttons or you've got climate control straight to climate um, yeah. you know and then that becomes either volume um, or if you flick it to climate then it becomes your temperature really simple but really clever yeah. I do like that I must admit oh Hang on, turn that off. The only thing I'm not sure about is this, this finish on here. The textured finish? Well, not the texture, it's the line. So it oh, OK, it, it yeah. It makes my eyes go a bit funny. Oh, uh, OK, fair there, enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just... I hadn't really thought of that. Yeah, that's fine. Um, what do you think of the seats? Because this is the only thing with this is manual adjustment. Cause manual of these, adjustments, yeah. Because of these buckets. I was, I was surprised by that. But yeah. uh, they do actually, yeah, with the Alcantara, in, in the centre, there's, there's no slip. Yeah. Um, and you know what I was saying about when we were in the Mustang about them being... I think it should be more special inside. This is kind of what I'm talking about, you know, like more kind of proper bucket seats or, you know. Yeah. It just, this feels, it's the same as the EV6's interior, the normal EV6, but there's a little bit of a lift because you get the, the... you got your GT boost button, yeah. Yeah. But you, I, I, yeah. I don't know if you've tried that, but I, yeah. I, it doesn't actually give enough more for that. It's, yet, it, you know, it's a quick car. It does, a it, car. does it need a GT button? There is that Probably sense. Not. Yeah. Um, what else do we like? So you've got mobile phone charging pad there, wireless charge. I like the way that because it kind of tucks under this. Tucks there, they've, yeah. They've, they've clearly designed it that way, so it's, yeah. it stops the phone moving around, which I think is a nice little touch. I like the Mustang and the Genesis, you've got the rotary controller, but yeah. it doesn't disappear like it does in the, the Genesis, but the, that's okay. Heated seats, odd, isn't it? You get, don't get electric seats, but you do get the heated buckets, so that's... Yeah, you'd think if you've got... The, that kind of spec that you would get yeah. electric seats as yeah, well. Yeah, that's um, it. Um, good storage underneath here, though, isn't there? Yeah, that's actually really useful. Like, you, you're starting to see that on a few cars now. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I yeah. think it is really good. And you've got a 12 volt charger as well. 12 volt there, and is that US, USB C? Yeah. There's a USB A one there as well, yeah. look. So there's good connectivity. There is really good connectivity in the front, and you need that because everyone's. Everyone, yeah, you know, when, when you're with a family, everyone wants to charge their. Everyone charge wants to charge up, or you, you know, connect up for music or whatever. Driving position for you, how have you found it? Uh, it's it, it's it's all right. It's um, yeah, the steering. I, I prefer the steering wheel in this to the Genesis. Yeah, uh, yeah, I was saying that to Rod. I think the Genesis one. I don't like the the spokes at the side are too thick for me. It just it yeah. doesn't feel right. And you've got the regen braking paddles, which. Yeah, which I like uh, the drive mode. I, I like having the drive mode as a separate button under the steering wheel. Yeah, that's quite handy. Whereas in the Mustang, you've got to go into the screen. Yes. To do that, you've got to go in and, and find it in the screen. So that's that's quite handy. You see, it's on the wheel, just at your kind of thumb, um, a, a thumb touch away, which is quite yeah. good. Yeah, uh, there's part of me, I, the, 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 I don't like. I was talking to Rod in the, the Genesis, the silver plastic in the Genesis actually does the opposite of making it feel premium to me. It makes it feel quite cheap, I think. Oh, totally, yeah. yeah. Whereas this, with its kind of more minimalist setup, mm. and this kind of bit here where you can flick between um, shortcut and, and climate, yeah. but still having that nice display, yeah. I, I think I prefer the... I think this is a nicer interior than the Genesis. Oh, totally, yeah. I'm not, I'm not a fan of the Genesis interior. I think it's uh, a, an overkill. You've tried to make it too premium and the kind of buttons are milled and it's just too much. Yeah. But for me, I, to get the perfect interior, it would be a mix between this one and the Mustang. And the Mustang, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, think, I think for me, of the three of them, I, I think it's the Kia. For me, I would certainly choose. Um, I think it's got the best interior for me. It's not perfect. Um, there's still too much kind of glossy black, yeah, I don't plastic. Know, I I, I, I've kind of gone off that a little bit, but generally, I know it's nice to have electric seats because if you've got a yeah. car of this price, yeah. where you've got, but well, it's not going to be a second car. You know, maybe you and your wife is driving it, or you and your husband, or whatever. You've both got different driving positions. It'd be nice to have memory seats where you can get in and just oh, totally, get yeah, it with it. At that price point. At that price point. That. Yeah. So, for, but for me, that's all. Oh, and it'd be nice to have a panoramic roof. But, yeah. Um, but for me, I think that's the best interior of the three for me personally. Okay. Yeah. Now, when it comes to battery size and uh, range and all the rest of it, now the Mustang has an 88 kilowatt hour battery, which should give, according to WLTP figures, a range of up to. 310 miles. The downside of the Mustang, however, is its charging speed. It's only at 150 kilowatts, that's its maximum charge speed. And that means a 10 to 80% uh, charge is going to take 45 minutes 
with this car. If you're charging from your home wall box and it's a seven kilowatt wall box, then you're looking at 14 hours to go from flat to full. The other downside with the Mustang is there's no heat pump available at all. The Genesis has got a slightly smaller battery, um, 74.4 kilowatt hours. Um, it's got a WLTP range of 289 miles. I've yet to test that from zero to make sure that's okay, but that's what the WLTP is. Um, charging wise, um, it's going to take 18 minutes to go up to 80% on a 350 kilowatt hour charger. Uh, on a wall box, it's going to take a bit longer. Um, in fact, quite a lot longer, 11 hours, 45 minutes. So the, the Kia EV6 GT, that's got a battery capacity of 74.4 kilowatts. And the double LTP range is 263 miles, but I'm not getting anywhere near that. Um, the charging rate is 235 kilowatts, so which is pretty good compared to the Mustang. And so 10% to 80% is going to take you about 18 minutes. And on a 7 kilowatt wall box, that's 11 hours 45. And it does have a heat heat pump fitted standard as well. So I think what we're and what we're saying is, despite the bigger battery mm. of the Mustang and its claimed longer range and I'm sure it probably is because I've driven obviously both of these cars and I've always found them to be relatively good when it comes to efficiency but I agree with you Charlie I think that EV6 loses a lot when it comes becomes the GT in terms of its range capability oh, totally, yeah. it really does you sacrifice a lot of range to go faster but uh, you know as I say in terms of stopping and charging on the move maybe you're going to be a stationary a lot longer with the Mustang because of that charging speed. You've got to find it. 350 kilowatt charger to get the maximum out. Of That's very, very true. That is very, very true. I think what's important for people, you know, if you're watching this, if you're looking at an electric car, it's maybe not just so much range that you need to look at. It's also the charging speeds, charging yeah. curves, and those 10 to 80% benchmark times. But as Charlie rightly points out, it's the availability of those chargers, those charging speed, uh, sorry, those ultra high rapid chargers yeah. in yeah. your area, perhaps, yeah. or yeah. on your route. Still. Yeah. And you can still add 40 minutes wait for someone to come off on as well. This is it, so that so, can yeah. be the downside. So, yeah, yeah. But certainly when it comes to range, it seems that the Mustang is best. However, in terms of efficiency and charging speeds, I think this puts it in third place, in fairness. Yeah. Yeah. Now the Ford Mustang Mach-E GT um, puts out 487 brake horsepower through its twin motors, so obviously one in the front axle, one in the back, it's all wheel drive. Um, it gives it a not to 60 time of um, 4.3 seconds so it, it's quick you know it's 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 more on a line with the Genesis than it is on the, the, the Kia the Kia is a lot Kia is a lot faster how does it drive well it's okay there's a lot to like about it but there is one big thing not to like about it and that's the one I'm going to start with because for me it is the biggest flaw of the car oh, apart from the price it is the biggest flaw with this car and it's its ride quality it is shockingly bad I mean really bad I mean anything other than a billiard table smooth road and this thing is knocking your fillings out all Ford seem to have done is gone tell you what it's the sporty one let's stiffen everything up they've not tuned it properly it just feels too rough it, honestly, any surface imperfection that this car comes across, of which there are a lot in the UK, you know, whether it's a transverse ridge, an expansion joint, a pothole, which also seems to blight us at the moment, a drain hole cover, this car will let you know that it's there, and in a big, big, a big, big way. It really is such a disappointment when it comes to its ride quality. Now, Ford say this is a thing called Magna Ride dampers. Great, brilliant. I tell you what, dial them back a couple of notches, Fordy, because this is shockingly bad. Really, really bad. I just cannot. You know, we've been talking about these cars all day and we're certainly saying, yes, you know, they are the performance variants, of course they are, but they're not going to be somebody's second car, not at the price they're not. They're, they're going to be a primary car, probably at this level. And they're crossovers, you know, they're, they're SUV crossovers, so you, can, you, you should be able to use them as a family car. But it's just, everyone I've had in this car has commented on the ride quality on and how bad it is. Everyone, even people that don't know anything about cars, they've all gone, oh, it's a bit uncomfortable. It really is very, very poor, I think. And as I say, it's the, my biggest issue with this car. Um, there is 
a little bit of a problem with the brakes as well. They're quite grabby. Um, they're, they're very powerful, but they're not easy. You've really got to sort of like learn them because if you just come off the pedal and straight onto the pedal like that, they're, they, gosh, they are strong brakes. But my goodness me, do you take a bit of time to get used to them? They just absolutely um, grab immediately. As soon as you touch the pedal, they grab. There's no progression to them. They will stop you on a sixpence. But as I say, it'd be nice to have a bit more of a feel to it, a bit more of a, a sort of like a, a, a deceleration rather than a rapid stop. That would be what I would prefer. And as I say, you just you you do learn it. You, you learn to drive around it, but. You know, as I say, it's easy to forget that. Now, talking of the brakes, you also have um, a brake regen. So you have one one pedal driving as well, but it's accessed through the screen, and it's either on or it's off. Uh, it is proper one pedal driving. It will bring the car up to an absolute dead stop uh, and hold it on the brakes. Um, but there's no adjustment in between, unlike the other two, where you can, you know, sort of like have a, a, a few levels in between to make sure you've got the right amount that you want. You don't get that with a Mustang. It's either on or it's off, and that's it. So that's another thing that I'm not so keen on, um, in fairness. The steering's quite nice. I quite like the steering. Charlie was saying he didn't... Oh, God. Charlie was saying he didn't like the kind of... He thought the, the, the wheel was too thin for him. I actually quite like it. I think it's... It's, it's it's nicer. It's the nicest design of the three cars. But again, I'd quite like to have seen them do something special with it. For it's the GT. Why has it not got like, maybe a GT logo rather than the Mustang logo or the GT badge on this little spoke down here? I don't know why. It just feels odd. It feels like, I don't know, they're just not really trying. And that's my point with the rest of the interior. The seat's comfortable. You know, it's got good shoulder support, you know, and all the rest of it. It's got a lengthy squab. It's not adjustable, but there's a good length in it. Um, but it just, you know, it, it's just, I don't know, it doesn't feel particularly special inside. And for this price point, I just think it should be. And the fact that it's, you know, if you look back to when Ford did the XR3i and the RS Turbo and stuff, you sit in an RS Turbo, it doesn't feel like a, an Escort 1.3L. The dash is the same. But that's it, you know, they had Recaro seats, you know, had the three-spoke leather-wrapped wheel, a different gear knob, you know. It just felt a bit different, you knew what you were getting. This could just be the Maquis extended range sitting in here. It, you wouldn't know you're in the GT model with this car. And that's the bit I find disappointing. Um, there's three driving modes, as you would expect. Ford don't call them eco-normal and uh, uh, sport. Uh, they call them whisper, active and untamed. Um, and it's nice, it stays in the mode that you choose. So I've had it in untamed mode. You switch the car off, you come back to it. It's still in untamed mode. So that's it, it stays in that particular mode. So I do like that part of it as well. And on the whole, as I say, the dashboard um, and the, the, the sort of like the visibility of this little driver information display I like as well. And as I say, the screen, this screen here, I don't like its position, but the Ford Sync 4 software and operating system is very good. Um, you've always got the climate control at the bottom. You can have your map, obviously, there if you've got navigation, or you can have your Apple CarPlay up there, depending on what you want. So all of that is very, very good. So my summary with the Mac EGT is this. The problem with the car is this. All the bits I like about it, are on the standard marquee, the extended range marquee, and all the bits that really annoy me about it are unique to the GT. So why would you buy the GT? And certainly, shouldn't you expect more, especially this ride quality, for £75,000? So next up is the Genesis. Now, this is a dual motor car and it produces a peak output of 483 brake horsepower, which means a 0 to 60 time in 4.3 seconds, which is very fast indeed, no doubt about it. As we've said all along, it's sort of the least sporting looking of the three cars, and in many ways, that's how it feels to drive. It's sort of like the least sporty of the three in that sense. There's a bit more movement in the suspension. There's a bit more movement in the body roll. But there's a firmness to it. They have firmed it up. Um, sorry, that's the lane keep assist on. Um, they have firmed it up. So you do feel just a little bit more chatter over the bumps from the suspension system than you would in a normal GV60. So there's certainly that to contend with. Of course, you've got your, 
your usual your driving modes that are on this little thumb wheel here so we've got eco comfort and then we go into sport mode as rod was saying you get the everything starts to glow red and the the the, the sort of the bolsters of the seats kind of pull in on you and and it makes you feel like oh yeah this is going to be you know sort of really quick and yeah it is it just doesn't feel you know all that kind of sporty it's all right you know it turns in well enough there's a reasonable kind of weight to the steering there's a nice sort of like you know sort of like use of the throttle when you put your foot down it certainly picks its it skirts up and goes so there's certainly a lot of performance there as you'd expect is it something that you would want to just kind of take out and have a blast for the sake of it not sure it is in fairness but what's nice about it is to have that performance just at a sort of like a, a foot twitch away so you're on a, a kind of road like these down by Goodwood and you need to pull out and overtake a slower car or something you've got that ability plus of course you've got the boost mode which gives you 10 seconds of added boost it's a bit of a gimmick but there we go right let's talk about more serious things now so you've got brake regen um, paddles behind the steering wheel where you can have a maximum regen with an eye pedal as they call it where it monitors what's in front of you or it uses the sat nav to sort of like apply brakes or you've got levels one, two, th uh, sorry, two and one and then off which is zero and it allows the car to coast. That I really do like. I always like the way that you can adjust the level of regen that you get on the car um, on these sort of like Hyundai Group cars. I think they're always the best at it when it comes to brake regen. So if you like one pedal driving, you can have it. If you don't, you don't have to. So that's good. And you don't go into the screen for it, and that's it. Uh, talking to the screen, so everything else is kind of easy to kind of use, you know, everything's at a fingertip. There is a lot going on, but there is a lot of physical buttons too, um, which is what we were saying in the, um, when we were in the interior bit. So things can be found relatively quickly. You know, you need to get to sort of like the heated seats or the ventilated seats easily enough, or the auto hold or the parking cameras, or adjust your temperature on the move. It's all easy to do because it's a physical, uh, physical switch. Steering wheel, I just don't like the steering wheel on the car. It's just too thick round about, sort of like the, sort of like you know the ten to three position. It just doesn't feel comfortable to hold uh, for me this is far too thick and of course you've got your usual safety systems as you can hear on the car so on the whole the Genesis is the least sporting of the three but I don't think it's trying to be too sporting in that sense I think it's just sort of like a, a, a premium car a more comfort orientated car with performance but I'm not sure that there's anything here that I wouldn't get in a Genesis GV60 lower down its range. Hmm. Now the Kia EV6 GT is the most powerful of the three cars at 577 brake horsepower. Nearly 600 horsepower in a Kia. I mean that's just crazy isn't it? It does not to 60 in three and a half seconds. If you want to know, that's it. And I think in many ways it's the sportiest feeling of the three cars. It's, it's the one that you get into and it, it sort of has its intent laid out in front of you before you've even done anything. This is the one that you think, yeah, this is going to be the sportiest drive of the three. And that is exactly the way that it proves. Um, I think the, the torque bias is very good on the car. I think you know, when you when you apply the throttle pedal, I think there's a lot of power comes through, but it's not at the front or the back, and primarily it just feels like it grips and it just puts you around the corner. So from that point of view, it's probably the most dynamic of the three, as you'd probably expect. Now, you've got drive different drive modes um, in the EV6 GT, as you would expect, um, and like the Genesis, it's done on this little thumb wheel down here, this little button here. So we go from eco to normal to sport. And then you've got another one over here. So like the Genesis Boost model, you've got the GT mode. Now that is slightly different. It's not 10 seconds. That is the top mode, if you like. So you can go in there and you can program kind of certain things into it. So if we flick that on, the whole kind of power, if you like, is unleashed in the car. And it just, whoa, absolutely flies. 
but don't necessarily take that to mean that it's absolutely faultless because it is quick but it's also quite firm you can probably hear there's a seat rattle because it's so firm. Now that's one thing I will say I do like about it as well. You've got these lovely kind of bucket seats, which I think would be welcome in the Ford. Um, you don't really kind of get those, but they're not electrically adjustable. And as you can hear, they rattle. My point is, it's a bit like the Genesis in a lot of ways. There's a lot to enjoy with this car. If you take it out for a test drive, the GT, and you go for a drive in it, there'll be a lot to enjoy about it. But it's the same type of enjoyment that you'll probably get from the standard EV6, the GT Line S, all-wheel drive car in some respects. Once the novelty of that sort of like acceleration wears off, are you better off just with a standard car? Anyway, let's talk a bit about the brakes as well, because like the Genesis, the, the adjustability of the regen is very good, the two paddles behind the steering wheel. So, I pedal on and off and then various different levels in between. So as we say, it's, see, everything's starting to rattle around, it's so firm in here. <laughs> so yeah, so you've got your kind of adjustability of the brake regeneration from the two paddles um, behind the steering wheel here, um, which is nice. But the pedal itself has got a much more progressive feel, if I just do that. It's a much more progressive feel than you get in the Mustang, which is quite grabby, as I said. It really kind of grabs you right at the start. This isn't like that. This is a much easier car, data suggests, to drive smoothly if you're not relying on the, the brake regen and such like. Steering's nice. I, I like the sort of like the, um, the size of the wheel, the shape of it's good as well. It's a bit thicker than the Mustangs, but that's okay. Um, it's slightly flat at the bottom, but again, not really a massive problem, I don't think. But yeah, as I say, it, it's a nice steering wheel. It doesn't look particularly attractive. It reminds me of sort of like a, an old Lincoln Town car from the 1990s. A bit more design going into the steering wheel would be nice. But everything else is laid out in front of you very, very nicely, and very easy to read and very easy to see. So yeah, on the whole, I'd say of the three cars, as well as being the sportiest of the three, the most dynamic of the three, in a lot of ways, the Kia is a little bit more focused on its intent as being a sport, um, you know, that kind of more sporting kind of crossover style. Whereas the other two, they're trying to be a little bit the best of both worlds and dare I suggest maybe not succeeding it either. But it's a good car, the Kia EV6 GT, but I don't think it's the best EV6. Now, like I said at the start of the video, Ford used to be the purveyor of the performance car for the common man. Well, you're going to have to be quite a wealthy common man if you want to bag yourself a Mustang Mach-E GT because the price of this car starts at not inconsiderable, £74,540. This particular car, as tested with the optional metallic blue grabber paint, is coming in at over £75,500. And bear in mind, the Ford only comes with a three-year warranty. Okay, so the Genesis comes with, a, to start off with, a five-year warranty, um, but that doesn't, isn't going to make it a cheaper car. So this baseline model is £67,595, but th this particular one has been spec'd up, and I have to read kind of this specification You've got your specs on you. there. Hey? You've got your specs on there. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so this car has got the innovation pack, the outdoor pack, the Bang & Olufsen audio comfort, comfort and seat pack, the second row comfort and seat pack, a panoramic sunroof and digital side mirrors. So this one actually comes out at £75,595. But as I say, you've got a five year warranty with that, so don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the Kia EV6 GT is cheaper than both these two, so it's 62675 and you get a seven year Kia warranty with this. So in terms of, dare I suggest, the performance car for the common man, Considering the performance of that Kia, that's that's quite an inconsiderable amount less, isn't it? I it mean, is, that's yeah. thirteen grand less than these two. That's, that's a lot. Yeah. And are these two thirteen grand more? Hmm. We'll see. Three all-electric, sporty, medium-sized crossovers at around about sixty to sort of like seventy-five thousand pounds. And as I say, remember, 
This isn't a cheap car, this Mustang Mach-E GT, and the idea behind this video was to find out whether or not one of these two really would be more of, dare I suggest, the people's choice. Now, I suppose the first one we maybe need to talk about is the Genesis, because yeah. that, as you said, has been a slight premium kind of... ...plant to this to justify its price. Yeah. What do we think of the Genesis? Um, I've spent a bit of time with it this yeah. week, and the more time I spend with it, the more I like it. Um, when it first arrived, it's it looks good, but um, yeah, it looks good. But um, yeah, I ended up quite quite liking it. In mm. fact, I like it better than your fa well, the channel favourite EV6 now. Um, I think the technology there. Um, there'll be bits you get used to. The sound system in this mm -hmm. spec up one. Yeah, it's it, when you go to something else or when when you drive the EV6, it doesn't seem quite as good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm getting to use that. There's bits about it I don't like. I think the interior is a bit kind of all show. Yeah, and, and the kind of well, unnecessary yeah. design yeah. and kind of features on it. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I could do without that, really. But, um, but yeah. you, one thing the world says, again, you, you know, you've got to option the car up. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's 75 grand. Relatively unknown brand. One thing we haven't talked about is the, um, the boost button on this. So, <laughs> it takes you from 430 brake horsepower. It gives you 10 seconds of an extra 50 brake horsepower. So, it's a bit like the E-Pre cars. So you yeah, 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 okay. Yeah. And you get... The, the, uh, the dash goes red, yeah. and the seat bolt is pushing on you, and you get these 10 seconds of whoa! It's quite. Is it gimmicky though? Yeah, no, it is. <laughs> I'm not saying it's not. But you like that. It's fun, isn't it? And you know, that's the whole thing. This is meant to be a fun car. Yeah. Well, I so they've so. kind of worked on that, but um, yeah. Okay, How so. How quickly would you get bored of that? Right, so here's a question for yeah. you. If you were to do a 1, 2, 3, where would you put it? Middle. You'd put it in the middle. Yeah. Which so one would you put? Yeah. I might as well say it now. It's the line up here. So I'm going Mustang first, Genesis second, and then... And then EV6. Wow. Charlie, you've been driving the EV6. What's your synopsis now? What do you, where are you on all the cars? Um, I, I think for me, the Genesis, you know, they've tried to make it pre... For me, I would, I would rather buy an Ionic 5. I don't, yeah, think, right. I don't think they've elevated it enough to justify that price. And I actually think the Ionic 5 is maybe a, a, a better car than this. I mean, they're, all, they're all blisteringly quick, mm. we know that. And bear in mind what I said, the Ionic 5 ends coming. Yeah. 600 yeah. horsepower, yeah. you know, and, you know and, and, and 65 grand is what they're talking about. Yeah, mm. no, totally. It's not cheap. Not yeah, we, yeah. yeah, and then the interior, you know, I just think it's completely overdone. It's sort of ostentatious, isn't it? It's just mm. too much styling and gimmicky. And they, they, you don't need to do that to create a premium look. Yeah. They, they kind of thought, you know, what, what's premium? But that, that's not my idea of premium. Not I your know idea. that it's probably someone's. Idea. Yeah. Yeah. But so I'm not sure who that person is. No. But yeah. So are you saying that that would be your least favorite? That, that comes bottom for me. Yeah. And then it's really close between the EV6 GT and the Mustang mm. uh, GT as well. So you were saying you were more impressed with the Mustang than you thought you were going to be, to be honest, weren't you? Yeah. No, I have been. And I was the same as well, yeah, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, the EV6 we all know it is, is a great car mm. but between these two it's, yeah. it's almost like head and heart yeah yeah um, with, with the mustang as well we sorry we, mm. we both had a chat earlier saying that just the finish quality and that you know just not quite as no no i think we've yeah it's ten thousand pounds less mm. you've got a bit more power not that you really notice it that much yeah but i don't with my heart i love the muffin Yeah, and I quite like the, the kind of generator. Nod to the V8. Yeah, the, the, the propulsion I, sound and I stuff. I don't think I'd like it, but I do. Yeah. It, it, mm. it no, interesting. It's better, and I, I think it. I know you might disagree, but I think it drives. Yeah. Drives well. So the big question is, Brian, what's your one, well, two, three? I'm going to be. Honestly, you know, I've spent obviously all the, the week with the Mustang, yeah. and the more I drive it, the more I realise that the ride quality is appallingly bad right. so that times when you're just using the car as a deal because all of these all three of these cars they're not cheap cars yeah. so they're not going to be a second car it's not like having a Caterham in the garage or, a, or an old 911 or something like that it's going to be your primary car and for me using it on a daily basis that's just too uncomfortable I, 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 I'm really there's a lot I like about it I think it drives quite well but I just find the right quality too much and it, I keep coming back to this it's 75,000, but I can't get that out of my head. Yeah. 75 grand for that car. And the bits that I like about the Mach-E GT 
are also on the standard Mach-E extended range. Yeah. Yeah. So the bits that I don't like about the GT are unique to the GT. Yes. So my point there is, I wouldn't buy the GT at all. I, I, I'd buy the standard Mach-E extended range, which is a good car. Maybe in some ways that's what I'm saying about all three cars. I was going to say, that's a really good point, because would, would you apply the same to... I probably would, in yeah. fairness, because I don't foresee me being disappointed with a GT Line S EV6 right. with yeah. 326 horsepower. Yeah. Uh, you it still looks the same, it still has a... Plus you get electric seats, you know, it's slightly more easy to use in the farm. You know, and it's still a quick car, yeah. and the same with the Genesis. Yeah. So, I, I, what I'm trying to say is, I don't think any of them, all three of them, are the best of their respective ranges. I think the, the, the cars that are lesser than them in the range yeah, are the ones that I would choose. But as a 1, 2, 3, I'm going EV6 GT first because I like Charlie. It's quite difficult. The Mustang's good apart from the ride quality, um, but I just think, you know, it, it, the, the EV6 is too good a car for me to ignore. And that's the previous car of the year by Auto EV. Oh, yeah, the yeah. EV6 is, and it's £10,000 less, and it's got a seven year warranty. There's almost like an Q car lookish to it that I yeah. do quite like. Yeah. Between them, the Genesis and the Mustang, I love the look of the Mustang, I really do. And I'm kind of like both of you with this. Whilst the Genesis is quite nice to drive, the ride quality is better. I'm thinking it's not as premium as it alludes to be in some yeah. respects. So the interior, I think, quite disappointing. And having to live with it on a daily basis, that's what I'd go with. So I'm going to put and kind of joint last the Genesis and the Mustang. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to be really weird there, but I don't have the EV6. But in fairness, I wouldn't have any of them. I'd always go the next rung down yeah. when it comes to respect. They're too expensive. And I think Ionic 5N, when it comes out from Hyundai, is going to give these two, these yeah. three an absolute spanking when it comes to... to conclude it. this three-car test, yeah. I guess. So what we're saying together is that EV6... It's so... ...between these two. I'd, I'd buy that with my heart. I'd yes. buy that with my head. Yeah. So for the sake of this, as a, as a general buyer, I'd probably put this... Yeah. In first. Yeah. Okay. So, EV6 GT is a win then. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I think. Second and third, we're, we're going to say, you pays your money, it takes the choice. Well, that's it. I think that's it. It's, it's going to come down to what you want. But I genuinely just don't see the value in, yeah. in, in, in that car. I just don't see 75 grand in that GT. That's the bit that keeps. If it was the same price as the Kia, then maybe. Yeah. But. Yeah. It's not. It's 75 grand. It's not even optioned up. It's 75 grand. It's, that's my problem with it. So there we go. So it's the Kia EV6 GT that wins the test. And as Rod says, you paid your money, takes your choice on second and third. <laughs> we'll leave that moving down, down to you, maybe, perhaps. Um, or comments. comments. And comments, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let us know what you would put in second and third place, or do you... ...that we would actually put the Kia EV6 in first place. And, folks, as always, thank you for taking the time to watch... ...episode of Auto EV. As ...subscribe to the channel. Once you've done that, press the little bell button that's down below, because then you get more... When our next video is uploading it's gone live if you have enjoyed this rather indecisive video then please make sure you give it a thumbs up and as we said don't forget leave us your comment and don't forget you can catch us up on social media on instagram and uh, tiktok still working on that one <laughs> and the youtube channel you know, we've got tons of reviews now and do go and check those out i think it's important that that youtube channel you, you understand because if you're in the market for a new or a you over 170 videos. 180 videos. So if you're looking at the used EV market and want to know what a car might be like, yeah. we've probably we've reviewed probably it. Video for you. So make sure you watch it. Mm -hmm. All it means for me to say is on behalf of Rod, Charlie and myself, thank you for watching. We'll see you again soon.